Welcome to another edition of Walking Through the Psalms. We're picking up in Psalm 19, part two. We've already talked about how the heavens declare the glory of God. That means creation. All of creation declares that God is, and it shows forth his handiwork. It shows his wisdom and his might, his power and his goodness. And we also know because of the fall, it shows forth his judgments. Sometimes critics of the Bible or of theism will say, well, how can God uh, do all of these things that are evil or be over all these things that are evil. Well, the Bible tells us that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven because man has sinned. God's judgment is upon this world. And actually the real mystery is why isn't it a whole lot worse than it is? Uh, and that's because of God's mercy and grace. But because of the fall of man, we need to be saved. And we're not going to learn salvation from the heavens. We're not going to learn how to reconcile ourselves with God because of the seas or because of the sky. What we need is an actual message from God that would tell us about what he has done to accomplish salvation and what we need in order to receive it. And that's the rest of Psalm 19. Psalm 19, the second half begins, the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. We have six different synonyms describing the Word of God. We have the law, the testimony, the statutes, the commandments, the fear, the fear of the Lord, and the judgments. And all of these things are referring to God's special revelation, His Word. That in God's Word, we have, notice here, the conversion of the soul. We know it's by the, by the Word of God, by the Gospel, by the message of grace and truth, and by the Holy Spirit applying it and, and giving it life inside of a dead sinner. We are raised again. We are born again. We are converted. Uh, the testimony of the Lord makes us wise. And of course, we have wisdom into how we ought to live, how we ought to grow in holiness, all from the word of God. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The, the person who really is a Christian, who really is changed, loves to read God's word, loves to see righteousness and justice and truth, because everything that comes from us does not have those things purely. And of course, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The enlightening of the eyes, again, refers to a wisdom that we would have a guide, that we would have a sure knowledge into how to conduct ourselves. Of course, the fear of the Lord being clean, enduring forever. That means the person who fears the Lord endures forever, that he will live forever because he fears God. And the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. That's not the case with man. Even when a judgment is just, we can't truly bring full justice when we look at the soul or, or the heart because we can't see those things. But God's judgments are perfect and true and righteous altogether. And then the psalmist goes on and talks about how much we should value this word. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned and in keeping them there is great reward. And so God's word should be a delight to us. It should be our greatest treasure in this world. Not only do we have salvation, but we have the joy of this life, how we can enjoy and please our God by obeying him. And God's word teaches us also that we ought not to trifle with sin. It warns us that God will judge those who might claim to know him. But if their lives don't show that forth, uh, that will be proven to be false. And so in keeping them, there is great reward. We have the reward not only of heaven, but we have the reward of crowns and particular rewards in heaven. And then the psalm ends with this application. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. And so we have really a prayer at the end of the psalm, an application where the psalmist is actually praying to God that God would apply his word to his own heart, that he would be kept in the way, kept in holiness, and that even in the meditations of his heart, God's word would prevail so that he would love the Lord from his heart, that he would love God's word, that he would love God as he sees him in the creation back to the minimum, uh, beginning of the psalm, and that 
God would be pleased with his life. This is what the psalm promises to all of us, to all of us who trust in God and who live by his word.